Hello everyone, welcome to It's Crochet O'Clock. My name is Stephanie and today we are going to be talking about a nifty new tool that I saw come across my Facebook feed that I ordered immediately because I'm an impulse buyer and I am very, very impressionable and I don't like it when I see new fancy tools out there that I have not tried and or own. So I purchased my own, the Counting Crochet Hook. I got one, yay! You guys, this came super, super quick. And my first thought was, why didn't we have this when we were doing the Arizona? Does anybody else remember 271 stitches over and over and over and over and over again? Who else put stitch markers every 20 stitches going across the Arizona just to make sure that they were staying on track? <sighs> this one. How nifty would it have been to have this tool while we were working on Arizona? Guys, <laughs> so anywho, I got myself the counting crochet hook. We're gonna talk about it, all right? Just one quick second and poof, here comes my review. Okay, so here is the insert from inside the packaging. It has the name on it, of course, what it is, and then the three different sizes that they carry. They don't carry any other sizes other than four millimeter, 4.5 millimeter, and the five millimeter. And then there's a real close up of the actual counter itself on the crochet hook. On the back side here, it has all of the features and then it has instructions for use. You press the S button which is right there for stitches. Then you press and hold the S button to decrease the stitch count. That was a question that's already been asked of me. You just hold that button and it will slowly um, decrease the stitches if you happen to make a mistake. Then on the reverse side of the hook, there is an R and that is for your row count and it will keep them separate as you are going through. And then you can press and hold both of the buttons to completely reset the counter. Now after three minutes of inactivity, you just press any button to continue on and it holds your count. Now it has a battery inside of it. It tells you what type of battery it is. So you might want to hold on to this because, you know, who knows, who knows if you're going to remember what the battery is. And then on the back side of it here, there's a teeny tiny little screw right there for you to remove it and replace the battery. Now the cost of this crochet hook, let me pull my invoice over here so you can see and cover up there we go so this was the crochet hook that I ordered I ordered a four millimeter and it cost me sixteen dollars and ninety nine cents it came from Utah and it came super super quick they fulfilled it the very next day it was to my house in just a couple days this is the swatch that I have worked up with the crochet hook. As I said, I ordered the four millimeter because that is the size that I tend to work in most because I tend to work in nurturing fibers. This is nurturing fibers eco cotton in willow. One thing that confused me right off the bat is this hook does not say what size it is anywhere on the hook. It does not give you any indication of what size the hook is. So I thought that maybe the hooks come in different colors, so that's how they are saying what size it is. But I ordered a four millimeter. My hook is pink, which is a five millimeter. I can I can tell you this is not a five millimeter crochet hook, so I'm a little bit confused with that situation, and I really wish that somewhere on the crochet hook itself, they would have put what size the hook is. That would have made things a whole lot easier because I'm gonna forget. Well, I only have the one, so I probably won't forget, but if I had multiples, I probably would have forgotten. Now this is a tapered crochet hook, which means that the head is different. It comes to a tapered point instead of the inline crochet hooks. So if you are a fan of Susan Bates or inline crochet hooks in general, you're probably not going to enjoy this because this is a tapered hook. 
So let me press this button. There's my, there's my row count, stitch count. You can see how it's bouncing back and forth between my row and my stitch count. One problem that I had while doing this is I discovered that you have to press this button with purpose. You can't just easily hit it and if you get into the groove and you're just wanting to go through quickly and get through something, you're gonna end up not counting stitches even if you think that, that you're counting them because this swatch right here is 30 stitches. The first time I stitched across, I only um, actually pressed the button about half the times. It was reading 15 for me when I got to the end. The second one, I was very deliberate and I went slower with my process and I was right on the money. And then the, my third round, or my third row rather, I ended up missing two stitches while I was counting. So that's a little bit off-putting, but I'm going to press on this stitch button and we will watch it decrease. It decreases very slowly, so you can stop and if you go past it, you can just hit another one if you only meant to take one or two away. The working of the stitches with the hook, it's very, very light. I didn't have any problem at all while I was working with it. Um, it. It is a bit awkward in my hand, but I use the Clover Soft Touch. So it, it it's bigger than what I'm used to and it's fatter than I'm used to. So my hands are, are not used to it. Yours probably won't be either, but it is what it is. Let's decrease this all the way down so I can show you. This is, an, this is one thing that I do not like aside from it not having clear markings of what size hook it is. There is no way to just press and hold a button and have it make the entire stitch count go away. You have to press and hold the button all the way until you get down to zero or one because if you press and hold both buttons, it will reset both of them. So if you're working with a large project, like right now, I've just started my fourth round. So I'm going to click that button and make it turn to four. If I wanted to just quickly get to zero, say I was working an Arizona blanket and I had 271 stitches, I would have to sit here and hold that stitch button all the way down to zero or one because I wouldn't want to reset my row count because I might be on say, you know, row nine or, or something like that and I might want to remember that. So that's a little bit annoying, just a little bit, but it works, it works great. A lot of people have asked me if, if, um, if there was a chance of them hitting the stitch button I guess it would depend on if you, um, how you hold your crochet hook. For me, my fingers aren't even close to the stitch button. And like I said, you have to be very deliberate when you are hitting that button. It does slow me down because I would have probably have been halfway through with these double crochets, but I'm not. So. I don't think that you would have an issue with hitting it at all, but maybe if you held it like a pen, you might have you might have the issue if you were holding it like a pen. And maybe that's maybe that's how it was designed for people that hold them like pens because your fingers do naturally rest right there, but then I I would be concerned. See, I accidentally just pressed it. Just right then I I just pressed it. So you might have that issue, but for us knife holders, this is how I hold my crochet hook and my finger and my thumb are completely away from it. My middle finger in the back is completely away from the row counter. It's nowhere around it at all. So that was, what was that? That was seven stitches. Did I actually hit all of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. And I actually, while I was sitting here crocheting with you guys, I accidentally pushed the button. So it should be reading eight, but it's only reading seven. So I dropped a stitch on the counter while I was just sitting here just that quickly. So I don't know that I would trust this just because you literally have to stop 
pay attention, press the button with purpose. You can't just, I don't know how I'm dropping. I don't know how I'm doing it, but I did it. <laughs> I think that for me and, um, and my OCD, I think that I will still stick to the good old every 20 stitches place a stitch marker because I know that that's the 20th stitch and just marking off my rows on the patterns or putting a tick mark on my little notebook that I always keep with me whenever I am working on big projects. I'm gonna press both of these buttons here and reset the entire thing. See how quickly that goes. There we go. Went from row and then stitch and then back to row. So that's my review on the Counting Crochet Hook. I was um, really hoping that I was going to like it more. Um, for me, the missing of stitches, that's far too important for, for me. And maybe I just need to work with it more, try and, and, and work with it more and get more used to it. And maybe I won't, I will feel more comfortable with getting to the end of the row and then not going back and, and recounting, but it slows me down. It slows me down considerably whenever I am crocheting. And I think that that's the big reason of why I personally would not want to use this crochet hook, but I'm glad that I did get it. I'm glad that I have it. Um, Perhaps I will find a situation where it will be useful for me, just not right now and not in the big projects that I, I really, really, really need to pay attention to because I would just end up stopping and recounting anyways and using stitch markers on top of this. So there you go, the counting crochet hook. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I will see you in my next video. Bye.